I reached there a Friday and my first game was on a Saturday. And you know the English culture loves to drink. They just anything they do is is drink. So as I get there, I reached I reached about one one PM English time and I got to where I was staying for the first week and the, the captain of the team I was staying with for the first week. He, he came home from work and he was like, We're going to the club, they have a quiz night. I was like, All right, let's go. Uh, and so we went, we had a few drinks and we did our quiz night and I remember one of the questions was where's Brian Lara from? And we were the only group that got it correct. Everybody else thought it was something else. And just because I was from Trinidad and Tobago, I knew where he was from. Good day and welcome to another edition presented by the Caribbean Sports Entertainment Management Group on Drive. On Drive is hosted by Carl Blankendel and Vernon A. Springer. On Drive brings to you consistency, information, stability, respect, and most of all, a passion to highlight the untold stories of men and women around the world, not just the Caribbean, around the world. Our motto is never expect, never assume, never ask, and never demand. Just let it be. If it's meant to be, it will happen with God's grace. Our special guest today, is really no stranger to the microphone. He's just completed the CPL. He's part of the winning team, the St. Kitts Nevis Patriots. It's the first time that the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots would have won out the CPL. He's an emerging star. He's an emerging leader. And he's one of the young cricketers that you really want to emulate because his work ethic is just amazing. It's excellent. I had the privilege of seeing him at the training camp in Antigua and Barbuda and following his, his progress with the West Indies Emerging Players team. He has certainly gone through in leaps and bounds, and I wish him all the best as he continue his short but dynamic career. A gentleman from the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago who continues to produce so many outstanding sportsmen and women, and Joshua De Silva is no stranger. No stranger from St. Mary's College. They must be proud of him. Good day, Joshua. First of all, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here to share my experiences and my knowledge that I know. Um, yeah, just thanks for having me. And I'm awesome. I'm getting ready to get into this and, and have some fun on this podcast. Carl, you want to take us, um, you want to go first with Joshua and then, you know, we could, you know, keep it going. Keep Joshua guessing, keep him on the grid. Yes, I want to go first with Joshua. How you doing, Josh? I good, I good. Just enjoying a little bit of vacation and away from the bubbles and away from a little bit of cricket. So it's good. It's fun. And I'm just excited. Yeah, it's good to see that. I, I see that beautiful smile. So I know you're happy to get out. Yeah. Even though cricket is your passion and your livelihood, we all need to have good mental health and be able to just be normal people. I'm going to move away from cricket, do some mm -hmm. research on you. You're from the island of Madeira, your ancestry. <laughs> yeah. There's only one other person that we know from that place. Who is that? Uh, Moses Henriques. Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> I know, I know. I just yeah, I didn't want so, to say the obvious. So you have a lot of pedigree in you because one of the greatest players, some people call him the greatest player in the world, comes from a small island, I believe, where your ancestry is from. So yeah. you must have that mindset to be a winner. How does it feel to be from the same place as Mr. Ronaldo? Honestly, I never really thought of it until you brought it up. I, I just have some, some of my dad's side of the family is just from Portugal. So... I never really thought of it like that, but thinking about it, it's quite amazing to come from the same place as somebody who is as great and a legend in, the, in his game already, and he's not even finished as yet. So, no, that's, that's a, an exciting thing. I didn't think of it like that before. Yeah. So, you know, a sports career is small. I, I see a commercial opportunity for you to engage with Cristiano Ronaldo and uh, get on the same platform. That'll be nice. I'll try my best to, to get in contact with him somehow, some way. <laughs> All right. And on a second note, I'm here in Bermuda, a very small, beautiful island. And we have a great uh, relationship with Portugal, um, the Azores, which is a small location of islands off the coast of Portugal. Um, we have a lot of individuals that migrated from the Azores to Bermuda, I believe, in the late 40s, early 50s. And they have settled well and they are part of us. And together they have helped us to build up the island and economy. They're well known for the... Um, the landscaping industry, but I've also moved into mainstream business from finance, retail, 
And now we even have a direct flight from Bermuda to the ASO, so that relationship is building well. So I'm saying all of that because I can see people now saying, you know what, let's try to find the location where Joshua is from. <laughs> but on a cricket note, um, looked at your history. You were part of the team initially as a, um, say it properly, a emerging player or a reserve player. And then that opportunity came about where, you know, the wicket keeper got injured or didn't feel well. And you took your chance and you were there. Give me that background from being a emerging player to all of a sudden saying, hey, you have to now go behind the stumps. Um, well, going on that tour, I was one of the 10 reserves that were going for the 15-man the squad that went. Um, to go on that tour was an honor. And it was my first tour on a, on a West Indies squad setup. So I, it was quite, quite, um, it was quite different and didn't know what to expect again in there. Um, I just did what I do best and just just follow, just follow and do and just do what's asked of me, what I've what I've been picked to do, um, been picked to help out, train, become better. And in the warm up games leading up to the the test series, I scored a hundred and then I scored fifty something not out, both not out. And in the first game, I didn't score much, but in the second game, I did really well. Um, and then coming into the test matches, the first test went by, the second test went by, and then the third test when um, unfortunately Shane got hit in his mouth. Um, it's quite difficult to keep in England. I, I, I'm surprised I haven't gotten hit when I played over there. But it's quite difficult. The moving ball is is a difficult thing. Even in New Zealand, when we played the moving ball, even in the Caribbean at times, Kimar Roach just moves it a lot. So, um, but no, the opportunity I got there was second to none. When I got onto the field, um, before I even got onto the field, coach was like, "Josh, you might have to go on." You know, I was like, "Why? Why?" And Shea could keep. He's like, "No, Shea have a little. His knee giving him a little problem. He can't really keep." today so i was like okay well just tell me so i stand up on the banister waiting and my gear is all the way in the hotel room which is across the ground so he's like josh go and get your stuff and i'm like what they like, go and get your stuff okay so i run across into my hotel room i leave my my um my fielding spikes over there because i pull my running shoes and i run over and i put on my batting shoes um that's where when i slipped i'm sure everybody knows the slip when i i didn't um i think it was rory burns um but yeah i got got my stuff on um, I came down on the field, just ran straight on from the hotel onto the onto the field, and and Jason greets me, takes off my hat and add on my brimmers, and he shakes my hand and presents it to me, and everybody's just cheering me on. That just made it so much easier. And that experience was my first actual taste of international cricket. Um, it was definitely an experience I will always remember. Um, seeing how those guys operate, even our team, even how Joe Root and um, Rory Burns, how they just go around, and how they. They just go about their game and how they take their take the attack to the bowlers and it's just amazing to see and that, that experience definitely set me up um, coming into my debut and made it a lot easier um, to to feel like I was already there. So from that first opportunity, which you didn't expect to happen at that time, did you feel that this was going to happen more frequently, or you thought this was just a one-off opportunity in the moment? I didn't really know. Um, I, I just took it as it came. That was an opportunity. I got to go on the field. I got to be around those guys and actually take part in a test match. Um, I did not expect it to be a frequent thing at all. I did not. Ex I knew I would be in and around, but I didn't think I would get the opportunity months later to actually make my test debut. Um, it, that was surreal to me and just opportunities come and, and you just have to make the best of it. I'll let it go back to Vernon, who's going to go into how you started in your career. He has a lot of information on your history, but to tell the viewers of the Caribbean Entertainment Sports Management Group platform for this exciting feature with the first active playing test match player, Mr. Joshua De Silva of Trinidad and Tobago. We'll let Vernon go into your background. And once again, we, we take some time out to um, salute our major sponsors who have made this possible, Altitude. Um, Andrew Wholesale and all of our sponsors who continue to give us invaluable support. We're back with Joshua De Silva on On Drive. Josh, growing up in Trinidad and Tobago, your father, your dad, Michael, and your mommy, tell us about your, your parents' background getting involved into sports because I know your dad is very, very, very a passionate cricket fan, and so too his mom. Yeah, uh, mom, mom just recently, a couple of years since I actually started getting like big into cricket. Um, but dad, ever since we were young, um, dad would sneak me into the Queen's Park Oval as a little boy, just hold, hold me behind, hold behind his back and walk through the gates and just to go and watch some test cricket. I could still remember that today. 
Um, but yeah, he was always a big sports fan. Um, unfortunately, he hurt his, his knee at Toys ACL young when he was young playing football. So he was never he never really played any kind of cricket. Um, no one in my family really played much sports. Uh, my sister did running, and now she's a personal trainer. Um, so it's just I was sports has always been something that dad pushed me to do. I was always a big football fan. I loved playing football ever since I could have walked. I probably had a football kicking around and and just just having fun with it. anything with a ball. They used to, they say my first word was ball. So just anything that I could do, anything I could pick up, um, hit a baseball, throw a baseball, tennis, golf, anything. I just played. So, um, but football was always what I loved. And and then I came into. I always played cricket in the backyard with my neighbors and my dad. And but then coming into secondary school, I just picked it up and. And I just gave it opportunity, and that's the rest is history. When your body is challenged, it burns fuel and energy. Respond to every challenge with Altitude Sports Drink. It replenishes, restores, and prepares you for the next level. Altitude is uniquely formulated with an electrolyte blend and magnesium available in fruit punch, blue frost, and grape. Altitude. Raise your game. Dem Sports is an innovative sports equipment manufacturer specializing in the production of high quality sports nets and cages for clubs, universities, and schools. The development of the Dem Sports Concertina cage either as a single or double width sports net has helped schools in inner city areas where space is a premium to include sports such as cricket and tennis in the curriculum in a safe and enjoyable way. The nets were developed really for when we had schools with a problem with space so it could be used in limited areas, it folds back to the wall to a minimum of 550 millimetres and pulls out to 8 meters just over. This sort of equipment is exactly the solution that, that, that many head teachers will, will look to use. Um, it is space saving, it is easy to operate, it is relatively low cost um, and again the impact of having provision within the school grounds is a, a real plus point. Gem Sports are the world leaders in sports nets for schools. They have a range of net sizes to suit all spaces and can custom build whatever you require. For more information on how we can help you transform your play space at school safely, quickly and affordably, contact Dem Sports for details. Caribbean Sports Entertainment Group. Special guest today is Joshua De Silva, talking a little bit about his football career, but more so his sporting career starting at St. Mary's College. Now, listen to you, Josh, you would have played both football and cricket for St. Mary's College? Yes, I did. What was your highlight during your, your, your playing career? Uh, my highlight would have been playing intercall football um, in St. Mary's College. That's only football side. Um, I played Intercol at Form 3 level. When I was at, in Form 3, I played at the Intercol level. So that was a great experience for me just to be... I always loved football. I played since Form 1. I played both sports since Form 1. Um, but I only really chose cricket until when I was in Form 5. Um, so I wasn't the best in school. I didn't really focus. I could have done a lot better if I focused. But I love to sleep and I love to... They used to say I used to go to school behind the bridge in, on, um, on Serpentine Road by King George Fifth Park. So uh, I used to live live in that park and just football cricket right through the year. Um, but cricket wise, I scored 196 um, against QRC in QRC, my highest ever score personally. Um, yeah, I still remember that. It was a, a great day and now I love both. I still love football and yeah, just just enjoy playing both sports and growing up playing, being able to play both sports. Um, before I went, there was about three or four years where two boys from, I think one was from Queen's Park, sometimes both from Queen's Park, um, and sometimes one from Queen's Park, one from just an under-19 boy from, from Trinidad and Tobago. 
Um, we given the opportunity between Karen Pollard and Atlantic LNG to put together and send two boys to England to gain experience and to to basically develop their skills on and off the field. And I was just I was lucky enough that I finished school the year before. And my coach, Coach David Furlong, he he asked me if I wanted to go. And to me, it was a no-brainer. But I, I wanted to tell him yes right there and then, but I had to talk to mom and dad first. Um, um, but yeah, they they were definitely. Uh, very keen on me going, so that that opportunity itself was life changing for me. That journey, well, when I got there, I reached there a Friday, and my first game was on a Saturday. And you know, the English culture loves to drink. They just anything they do is is drink. So as I get there, I reach I reached about one one p.m. English time, and I got to where I was staying for the first week. And the the captain of the team I was staying with for the first week, he, he came home from work and he was like, "We're going to the club. They have a quiz night." I was like, "All right, let's go." Uh, and so we went, we had a few drinks and we did our quiz night. And I remember one of the questions was, where's Brian Lara from? And we were the only group that got it correct. Everybody else thought it was somewhere else. And just because I was from Trinidad and Tobago, I knew where he was from. So we won that question. Um, but again, in the first game, the next day, I scored 98. Um, I got a ball that pitched halfway down the, the wicket and rolled and hit me on my shin. Um, and and then I went on to score 764 runs at an average of 64, I believe. If I, could. I remember every inning that I played in that game, even the bad ones I, we, we needed. This game especially, we needed like 20 runs off 10 overs. I was batting with the last man since I was on about 54. And I was on 115. And the worst, slowest dibbly doubler, no, I can't even say medium pace, slow, just throw it out his hand, bowl a ball. I tried to slog it, but hit the bottom of the bat. And go straight back to him. I think I cried. But by the time I could even get off the field, I had a bear in my hand. And it was, I don't, I don't understand the culture, but that's just how it is. But that experience on and off the field, um, especially off the field, taught me to be um, a lot more, a lot more for myself because I was a, I'm a big mommy's boy, still a big mommy's boy. Mommy packs my bag still, uh, no shame in that. Um, so, um, to go there and have to clean for myself, do laundry, cook, and do all of this was was definitely life changing, and it definitely showed me what I need to do, and just that helped me on the field, being more disciplined and patient altogether. Um, in form one, when I when I went to the first training, nobody wanted to be the wicket keeper, so I was like, all right, coach, you have a pair of gloves. He's like, yeah, let me try it. So I put it on, didn't even have on inners or anything, and I I just put it on and just catching balls. I decide, and the first game came up, nobody still wants to be wicket keeper. So I take the gloves and, and literally the rest is history. Every, every team, most teams that I've played for, if not all, I have been the wicket keeper. Um, in 2020, when I got that opportunity, I wasn't expecting to play the first game at all. Um, I was just given the opportunity. I scored 41 or 41, actually, not out. And I, I, I tried really hard. I was just trying to hit the ball. I couldn't. But my role, as you said, was to bat out. Just, just bat and whoever's on the next end, get them on strike, hit the odd boundary. Um, but coming down in the end, everybody's going to see it as I, I was just, I've been called so many names by people that, um, not from Trinidad, but just all over the world, um, just because I didn't get it over the line. But um, that's cricket. And the that op that experience and that opportunity itself taught me a valuable lesson um, that it's not always going to work out. It's not always going to go your way. Yes, you might be doing well, but the end result might still not, might not be what you want. And um, getting dropped in the next game was... Um, I didn't expect it. I really did expect to play the next game. But when coach told me, um, I was pretty upset. And But I'm not the kind of fellow, I'm not going to say, ask, I'm not going to question why I'm not playing. I'm not going to double, I'm not going to second guess the coach or anything. I'm just going to, I'm just going to say, okay, no problem. And, and wait for my next opportunity. Um, but Chris Lynn and Ben Dunk, they were really great to me in that first year. Um, they basically took me under their wing and helped me. So they were, they were talking on the sideline and while the other while the second game was going on, we're like, all right, we're gonna look, we're gonna find where your boundary option is, we're gonna find, we're gonna look to rotate the strike more, we're gonna do this. So they were trying to help me build my T20 game, while still not going out of my comfort zone, because I don't see myself as a huge hitter of the ball. Um, I don't muscle the ball. I'm a, a very good timer of the ball. So just those little tips and those little things kind of helped me into the next games. Um, and then against Guyana, I scored 59 off about 40 balls. Um, so strike rate went up a little bit, build a little more confidence and. Yeah, and that that season and that last year was this year is completely different to last year. I think the the whole vibe in the team was was a lot different. And we, unfortunately, we had lost our overseas four of our overseas before the tournament even started. But um, yeah, it worked out in the end, and and we got four overseas that were able to help us go over the line. And 
and we did the job. The the vibes doesn't stop. It's non-stop laughter, non-stop experience. You, you can't get enough of the two of them. They're two legends. And Dwayne Bravo as a captain, Chris Gale as a captain as well. Two phenomenal captains in one dress room. Not many people have been so lucky, unless you've played for West Indies, to be able to be in the same dressing room as those two those two legends of the game. So uh, my, my highlight was opening with Chris Gale. Um, never in my life would I have thought I would have gotten the opportunity to open with Chris Gale. Just unfortunately, he didn't. He didn't fire in that game, uh, but we still went on to win, and I scored some runs. So, but just just walking out with the big man, and just seeing how he goes about, um, and just me being a little scared. I didn't even say, "Do you want me face or are you face?" You know, it doesn't matter. Spin or pace. Just just trying to ask. I feeling scared, but no, it was that that experience in itself was was something that I'll never forget. Um, yeah, I would like to be. Um, still trying to figure out my my T Twenty game. I think I'm a, a pretty decent fifty over cricketer. Um, I do I do play Test cricket mainly, so it's quite hard coming from straight out of a Test series and and into uh, a T Twenty series. Um, personally, Ross and Chase did it pretty well. He has loads of experience behind him. Um, for me, I'm probably still just trying to develop that that change. Um, we see the best T Twenty players in the world: Virat Kohli, Steve Smith, Joe Root. Um, all of them are great T20 players and they don't play out of out of the ordinary shots. They stick to their game and they play proper shots. So for, for me, I just want to develop that, that just change in tempo. Not necessarily slogging because when I try to slog the ball, I, I, I lose my shape, I raise my head, it doesn't go as planned. Um, I hit the ball better when I just have a solid base and just time the ball. So for me, that's what I'm looking through, just exactly what Rustin does. I'm just trying to, to be that same player he is and... Just up the strike rate, rotate the strike more, and just develop as an all-round cricketer. I don't see myself as just a test cricketer, but there are a lot of ways I could improve to become a successful T20 player as well. When your body is challenged, it burns fuel and energy. Respond to every challenge with Altitude Sports Drink. It replenishes, restores, and prepares you for the next level. Altitude is uniquely formulated with an electrolyte blend and magnesium available in fruit punch, blue frost, and grape. Altitude. Raise your game. Dem Sports is an innovative sports equipment manufacturer specialising in the production of high quality sports nets and cages for clubs, universities and schools. The development of a Dem Sports concertina cage, either as a single or double width sports net, has helped schools in inner city areas where space is a premium to include sports such as cricket and tennis in the curriculum in a safe and enjoyable way. The nets were developed really for when we had schools with a problem space so it could be used in limited areas, it folds back to the wall to a minimum of 550 millimetres and pulls out to 8 metres just over. This sort of equipment is exactly the solution that, that, that many head teachers will, will look to use. Um, it is space saving, it is easy to operate, it is relatively low cost um, and again the impact of having provision within the school grounds is a, a real plus point. Dem Sports are the world leaders in sports nets for schools. They have a range of net sizes to suit all spaces and can custom build whatever you require. For more information on how we can help you transform your play space at school safely, quickly and affordably, contact Dem Sports for details. Josh, um, yeah, great experience with the two captains, DJ Bravo, Chris Gale. 
most people will look at it and say, okay, it's easy, but take us back. How patient do you have to be when you are starting out in cricket to actually wait for that turn? You have to go through a lot of different age groups and a lot of training sessions, and it may never happen. So t you let us know how patient the young players have to be today. That That is something that you can't be taught. You, you can't think you're going to do it in the matter of five years, six years from when you start playing cricket. Let's say you start when you're six years old. You could reach 25 year old, years old and you still haven't played pre professional cricket. Um, it's just about taking those opportunities. Some people may get them before you or they may, may have a little easier road. Or um, I was very grateful that I got some opportunities and I just made use of it. I just made use of opportunities. That's the most important thing. But patience and to get those opportunities. Um, it's a lot of sacrifice, a lot of, a lot of hard work. Um, the kind of days you put in, it's not just a two-hour, three-hour day. It's a full job. It, it literally is a full job if you want to be great. So you have to manage your time, do what you need to do to get the results and to get the proper work in. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. Just take the opportunities when they come because they don't come very often. If you take that opportunity, more opportunities will come. But if you miss that one, you don't know when the next one is going to come. So that's, what, that's the most important thing. You're playing with some great players now and you've had the opportunity of the big boss himself. But let's go back to the fantastic West Indies team that made a name for themselves going to England. We're talking about the great Malcolm Marshall, etc. Who was your favorite player maybe from that era? Um, has to be the fast bowlers. All of them, actually. Um, who wouldn't love to see these fast bowlers steaming in and just taking edges, licking down stumps, licking down people? Um, very entertaining to watch. I still go back and watch it on YouTube every now and then. Um, so it has to be all of them. I can't pinpoint anyone. And you guys have had a lot of success, but you also have challenges as a team and as individual players. Um, do you go back and look at some of those difficult times they had when they traveled overseas and say, you know, if they could have done it back then, we can definitely do it now. It's a little bit easier. The pitches are better. The amenities for the players are better. The, the salaries are better. But do they still motivate you to get up and say, let's go do it for the West Indies? Yeah, of course. Playing for, for the region. It's not just one country we're playing for. We're playing for a whole region. So that in itself motivates all of us. Me personally, I just I wake up every day and I'm very grateful to, to be able to say that I play for the West Indies. Not everybody can say it. And, and it just it actually it makes me emotional to actually think that I, I actually play for the West Indies. I'm not where I want to be. I have reached one stage. Um, I want to play 100 test matches for West Indies. That is my goal. Um, but yeah, just to play and have the honor of representing millions of people, um, it's it's definitely it's very heartwarming. And yeah, I, could, I hope I can do it for many years to come. Now, you just said that you are a batter 50 over cricketer. Uh, and But we know T20 is where the big money is. Um, is that in the back of your mind that even though you are more suited to the 50 over game, you know, to, to retire at some point with, you know, a nice bank account that 50, 20 overs is going to be the one where you probably have to improve here? Uh, that, that is where all the money is. But no, I'm not thinking about that right now. I'm just thinking about playing cricket. If I play a number of test matches, do well, I'll get a good contract. Um, it still might not be enough. Or it still might not be as much as the T20, but... No, I'm just enjoying myself. I'm young. Um, I'm trying to make the most of my test career. Maybe later on we'll see how, how the body is feeling. But no, I, test cricket, love it. That's the pinnacle of cricket. Um, it'll never die, for me at least. So that's that's where my head is at. I just want to be the best test player I can be and it'll just filter down through formats and I'll be the best at all formats eventually. Now, coming from Trinidad and Tobago, there are a lot of outstanding musicians and other sportsmen currently and in the past. Um, do you feel any pressures on your shoulder when people look at you now to say, continue the name of Trinidad and Tobago in excellence? Um, no, I don't feel any pressure. There are a lot of greats that, that came through the ranks in the different sporting disciplines, but I don't really feel much pressure because um, Trinidad and Tobago, I, I'm sure most people have my back and they all wish me well, I would hope so. So I'm just trying to fly the flag high, represent Trinidad and Tobago and West Indies the best that I can. And, and just do do my best for the country and the region because that's all I could do is make them proud. Now I see you have a looks like a Joshua the silver head one. Am I right? Yeah. Is that something you created yourself? That design and the branding? It is. Yeah, I actually made I made about twenty five of these. It has JDS on the front, and trust the process on the side. It's a 
this kind of slogan for the brand. Um, it's just about trusting. How I think of it is just trusting the process and and going through the journey. You have to trust the process to reach the journey. So to reach the end of the journey. And my, my girlfriend just put this down. She made this for me. Um, another JDS, trust the process. And my nickname in West Indies is Shark. So a shark on the back with a cricket bat. And yeah, that was that was one of my, my presents, my birthday presents. But no, nah, it's something I'll look into doing more often um, when I get some time. But no, nah, it's just, just about a brand and showing youngsters and that it, cricket isn't only the only thing. You have to also do other things as well because we can only do so much cricket. We might go crazy if we only focused on cricket. So just have other hobbies and just have fun doing a lot of other stuff as well. So, yeah, so modern day entertainer or modern day athlete, which you are, because sports is entertainment. People want to see excitement. People want to get closer to the players now than they could have done in the past. Um, take us through that process. You're playing, but you're thinking about commercialization, making a name of yourself. And if you look at Michael Jordan or LeBron James, they actually make more money by not playing basketball, by being a brand ambassador or Shaquille O'Neal. Is that something you're looking forward to? Because this is pretty unique outside of a cricket bat or any cricketed equipment for you to brand yourself at such an early stage in your career. Um, not really focusing a hundred percent on it at the moment. Um, it's more a hobby than anything. I have a, a YouTube page that I have. Um, I have over thirteen thousand subscribers on there. So that is just something. Just people following me, following the journey. Um, it's just something for people to relate to. Um, eventually, yes, I would love for it to be a brand and be my brand and show people like just have different things and have different kind of accessories, clothes, um, more hats and etc. Um, and that would be the goal. Um, even if a big brand was to come and ask me to be a brand ambassador and I can make clothes through them, that will also be something. But no, it's just just a side thing at the moment, just a hobby and just something different to do than and get my mind away from the 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 work that is cricket. As much as I love it, it's still work. All right. And before I give it back to Vernon, um, let us know where they can purchase these items. You know, your website, your Instagram accounts, your social media handles. Let the people know where they can find and order these um, unique items. Um, they're all, well, this is sold out at the moment. Haven't had any in a little while. So if you follow me on Instagram, Joshua da Silva 08, um, you'll see when I have some more in stock. Hopefully, a couple of months, I'll. I'll make some more and, and I'll put them for sale. And yeah, just follow me and wait for that, that notification for when I'm when I'm bringing them back. All right. I'm going to go back to Vernon, who's going to go farther into your cricketing career and your future ambitions. Um, I've I've spoken to him a couple of times actually. Uh, starting a couple of years ago, we had a, a B Mobile Academy, and he was the the brand ambassador for that. Had a few chats with him there, and then seeing him in the Oval, um, had a few chats with him. I saw him in the airport before uh, a series uh, a couple of months ago. Um, so I've talked to him a fair bit and just try and pick his brain a little bit. Probably not as much as I should. Um, would love to sit down and have a more in depth conversation with him. Maybe play a round of golf. Because I know he loves that, and I'm I'm getting into a bit of golf myself. So, um, yeah, that'll be that'll be probably a big dream of mine. Don't know if that'll ever happen. So we'll see. But it'll be good to have a few more conversations with him. Um. That's a very good question because it's difficult, especially in the bubble. There's not much you can do. Um, the most you can do is talk to family, talk to your loved ones. Um, there's not, not much more than that. Some bubbles is just literally don't even have a table tennis board or anything to go in the team room and play. So it's straight from your room to the ground, back to your room, back to the ground. So it gets a bit repetitive and a bit boring. Um, and it just feels like you're trapped in a prison. Uh, as much as we're doing what we love um, and we enjoy playing cricket, it's still really difficult to be in a bubble. Um, when we were in England the first time, that one that was the first one, so I guess it probably didn't feel as bad because we had a lot of games. Um, the game room was full. We had a lot of things to do. Um, 
but most of the other ones were, were pretty difficult, I would say. It's just nothing to do. Um, you can only talk to your friends for so long. You can see the same faces every day. Um, love all my teammates, um, but it gets difficult um, not having somebody just to, to go and talk to that's not involved in the cricket. You'll have to talk to them over the phone. So, um, But yeah, just dealing with that outside. When I come back home, I just try to refresh. I go fishing. I do stuff that I love. I take my mind off of it. I'm still training, but I'm trying to take my mind off of it when I'm not training and just go and do something else. Just my mom sends me a lot of um, a lot of kind of motivational stuff, kind of just to keep my head right, my mental in the right space. Um, as much as fitness, physical fitness is, is a big part of it, mental fitness, I would say, is even more important. So that's just a few ways I deal with it and still trying to deal with it. So hopefully these bubbles end soon so I can I can get back to, to being happy and, and doing what I want when I want on off days. Um, when I'm home, a training day would be wake up. Um, I, I like to train. Well, we have different times to train with Trinidad and Red Force. So I'll mostly time choose the morning. So I'll wake up, drive to Kuva, um, have a have a two hour, three hour session there. Um, then I'll go to gym. Um, depending, it might be in, in the east, in Trin City, or it might be in the Oval. I'll go on gym. Um, and then in the afternoon, I'll have another knock. I'll have a long knock, probably an hour long. Um, and that's probably five days a week doing try not to, to overdo it too much because your body does get tired so rehab is very important so doing that is is very important so yeah just that's a normal day that's a, a cricket filled day and then on the weekends just have fun and when i don't have cricket just enjoy myself um i should probably count um i uh, I'm not sure. Over 500, I'm sure. Um, that probably seems like a little bit, but between between um, Red Force and, and Batten, when I go in the Oval, um, yeah, I'd say over 500, get up there. I'm not sure. Just averaging. Don't want to don't over, over shoot myself. And then people say, what? He lying. So I'll just say 500. I'm a big soca fan. Love my soca, Marshall, Kess, all of them. That's that's my my pump up music when I wanna when I feel when I feel like I need some energy. I'll play some soca. Um, but I listen to really what I'm in the mood to most of the time. Um, dancehall, reggae, um, R and B, whatever I really feel to listen to. I'm not a huge music person, so I don't listen to it all the time. But when I'm in the mood, it just depends what I'm in the mood to listen to. Um, on a 19, the, the coach, um, he gave me the nickname, the Great White Shark. And then, I don't know how it got into West Indies cricket, but that was, that was only for Trinidad on a 19. And then and then it came, I don't, don't even know, I think somebody, maybe Akil Hussain might have, might have said it in a, a training session. And I think Jason Holder picked it up and, and and then he just started calling me it. And then now everybody calls, him, calls me it, now I'm, I'm Shark. So that. I don't know how it came up, but that's just how it is. Mm. Ah, in England. Glad you asked me that because Barcelona are not doing too well right now. Um, <laughs> Liverpool, I love Steven Gerrard growing up. Um, following, that was probably my football and idol. Him and Francesco Totti, my two of my favourite players all time, and Andrea Perlo. Um, so, but yeah, Steven Gerrard was somebody I looked up to growing up, so and I watched Liverpool a lot, so yeah, it has to be Liverpool. Um, tennis, golf, NFL, um, basketball when it reaches the playoffs. Um, and yeah, that that's about it. There's some golf, well, I probably said golf already. Um, yeah, just whatever. If I see something that might intrigue me, I might look at it. But I remember those are the, the main ones that I would, I would really watch. Like, say, I'm going to watch it. I'll see it. I know it's coming on, so I'll go and watch. Um, I don't really have a, a basketball team. I just watch just to, 
to see who's going to win. Because most of the cricketers are fans, so I just watch this in case their team loses so I can tease them. Yes, Josh, um, good stuff. If you didn't make it as a cricketer, what would you be doing right now, today? Where would you be working? Uh, I don't think I'll be working in an office, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I think I might be a fisherman or a coach of some sort. Um, definitely nothing to do with an office, nothing to do with a nine to five. That was the worst thing. I did it once in my life when I was in England working and I'll never do it again. I never paid attention in school, so I probably don't have the passes to do it anyway. But yeah, definitely not something outside outdoors, but probably fishing or coaching, one of them. You named three football players just now, Steven Gerrard, Francisco Totti, and Andrew Perlo, and they all stayed with their team or club and even playing for the national team for a very long time. And if you look at the characteristics, they were also loyal. They didn't go to any other club that, that really offered them more money. Is that something that, you know, is part of your character as well, your DNA loyalty? Uh, I, I love I love it. Um, that, that is actually one thing I pride myself on. I love to be I love to be loyal to my club, my team. Um, there's Queen's Park at home. I've been with them since I was 13 years old. And I don't ever see myself leaving that club. Um, with franchise cricket, it's a lot different. You don't really control where you go, right. so it's kind of yeah. it's kind of just whoever picks you, picks you. So, um, but yeah, I I love loyalty. Um, that's one thing I pride myself on. So, yeah, just as as much as I can keep it that way, I'll do it. Right now, for the youngsters out there that want to be the next shark, and I would say the great white shark, it's a difference between being a shark. Yeah, a great white shark. Um, what is the what are the five things a young player must do to become a good wicket keeper or a great wicket keeper like yourself? Um, wicket keeping is it's an art. So you one thing you have to love it. You're not gonna just be a wicket keeper and not love it because it's the hardest job. All fast bowlers would disagree, but it's the hardest job in cricket. Fast bowlers get to have a break at the at the boundary. I don't, or wicket keepers don't. So that one, loving it, is definitely number one. Um, keeping your eyes on the ball has to be another one. Um, don't take your eyes off because you know, something will go wrong. You'll drop a catch or something. Um, strength. Um, I'm still probably not as strong as I should be, but strength, that's stuff I'm working on. Core strength, leg strength, back strength. Uh, just overall being fit is definitely important for being a wiki keeper. Um, enjoying it. You can love it, and but you have to enjoy it as well. Um, and just one thing to put in the work and doing the dirty work is another thing because we keep us we we pick up the scraps we're we're the people we make everything look neat so um you don't have to be neat in the dressing room everybody says the keeper's corner has to be neat but that's not me i'm a bit all over the place you could ask jason holder he's he's definitely always tells me about it um josh clean up your corner i'm like jesus it's okay but no <laughs> but yeah um yeah just you, you pick up the scraps on the field so just want to enjoy it and just have fun all right um you've been at your club for a long time you're part of the west indies test match team uh, but if there was one coach when you were coming up that you can say i'm playing the game because of him he taught me the foundation you know this is your opportunity to thank some of your coaches that have gotten you where you are i'll leave that up to you who are some of those coaches you want to mention yeah um there's quite a few there's about three um early on there's coach david furlong when i came into to queen's park he's been a big inspiration a big help to me um going through my career andre lawrence when i was in school um i also went on a new zealand tour with him and he actually basically developed me as an opener he was the first person to put me to open um and then there's Floyd Reefer recently um, with the emerging players, helped me a lot during that. I scored, a, I scored 300 runs, an average of 50-odd, 40-odd, and that, that series helped me to make my ODI debut. Um, and then re more recently, Monty Desai, um, our batting coach um, for West Indies, mentally, physically, just a sound man and just brings brings things down to, to a much simpler way and just teaches teaches the game through his eyes he may not have played international cricket but the kind of knowledge he has and what you can take from him is, is, is second to none so yeah those four would definitely have to be um who i who i look up to and, and who have helped me throughout my journey so far all right so that was your coaches want to go to your number one supporter 
your mom, who you said, you know, is, is fantastic for you, gives you motivational speeches and literature to read. Um, how, how valuable is it to have your mom with you by your side, even though you're not with you at the same location, but just knowing she supports you? Oh, amazing. Um, long time she used to come to the cricket matches with her iPad and, and read books and watch movies on, on it. But now she doesn't bring anything and she's just watching the cricket, um, which is phenomenal. I, the support I get from my parents, not only my mom, my dad as well. Um, I couldn't be more grateful. That, that just it motivates me to want to go further and do more and just be the best person I can be for them, not really myself, because I'm, I'm living a dream, but for them, I just want to make them proud and, and really just just be make make them feel proud of me and happy that I'm that I'm doing something I love and, and doing well at it. All right. So we recently interviewed Maximus Dan, MX Prime. He is well known for having the fighter song for the Circle Warriors, the national football team for the World Cup 2006. Uh, I've sp asked him, you know, has he ever thought about doing another song? Is mm -hmm. does the West Indies Test Match team or West Indies cricket teams would they like to have a song which is specifically for them to motivate you before each game, like your song? I'm sure we will. I'm I'm I'm, I'm open for it. I would love I love that song. Uh, Any times it comes comes on, I'm singing along. So um, yeah, I'm sure the West Indies cricket team would love that. Um, he may have to talk to Dwayne Bravo, and Dwayne might have to be part of it as well, <laughs> because you know he loves his singing, and I know he has one coming out for this World Cup. So, um, yeah, but I, I would personally love that, and I'm sure the boys will as well. Um, we have rally around the West Indies, we sing before, and that gives me goosebumps. I can only imagine if we have a, another song to pump us up. All right, and my final question before I go back to Vernon. What's your favorite ground out of all the grounds you've played on around the world? Which one would you say? I know t when I play on this ground, I'm gonna have a good game. Um, hmm. um, well, the ground that I love to play at and score runs would have to be Warner Park. I have quite a few um, half centuries um, there for, for Red Force in the first class. Um, but the most beautiful ground I've probably played on. Um, would have to be in New Zealand, Queenstown. Um, that that ground is beautiful. As if where Corey Anderson broke the the record for the fastest ODI hundred with the planes taken off in the background. Um, yeah, that that's a beautiful ground, and that will be my favorite. Um, um, be, with be, beauty, my favorite beauty ground. All right. So you're here on On Drive Caribbean Sports Entertainment Management Group with none other than the Great White Shark himself, Mr. Joshua De Silva. Of Trinidad and Tobago, test match player for the West Indies cricket team. And I'm handing it back over to my co host and good friend, Mr. Vernon Springer. Uh, I guess. Um, I get this question a lot. Um, I'm sure my dad gets it more than me, but um, yeah, I, wherever the team wants me to bat, I will I will put my best foot forward and bat. I don't really have a preference. It's just wherever I'm given the opportunity. Um, there's different different challenges with opening and, and coming in lower down the order, but um, for me, it doesn't really matter to me. Wherever I'm given the opportunity, um, yes, opening and keeping is very difficult. But uh, Monty Desai would love me to do that in the future and become the first wicketkeeper in international cricket to do that in test cricket. So um, I'm definitely will like to work towards it. Um, but wherever I'm asked to to bat or to to put to give get the opportunity, I'm gonna just take it and try and do my best, whichever way that comes or whenever that is. Thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure to be here, um, giving me the opportunity to share my story and and just be motivating for the youngsters coming up. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot. It's an honor and I can't wait to do it again. Thank you very much, Joshua. And I'm quite certain that many young wicket keepers around the world are going to try to follow in your footsteps, especially at, at such a young age. Thank you very much. All the best with the future of your career. Thank you. Thank you for having me again.